So what is black belt itis? Black belt itis is just something that I made up and it is a sickness that all black belts get and perhaps even brown belts, really any colored belt. It's just something I've noticed over the years and talking to other martial art teachers from other styles, they all see the same malady in their school. So this is more of an in-house video, so if you don't train, don't worry about this video. You know, it, it won't apply to you at all. But any of you who are actively training out there, meaning, you know, you've been active within the last month or so, you are still actively training. Once you stop training, after a month or two, you can't call yourself an active martial artist. You're not. Uh, you're a theoretical martial artist, perhaps, but um, unless you're putting in your time several times a week on the mat, you're not active. So. Uh, this applies more to people that are active in martial arts and are, it's, they're doing it now, it's their current endeavor, their goal, their dream, their passion. So black belt-itis, the question I get asked, you know, it, it's basically what happens after you get your black belt. You know, when you're in, a, in your brown belt stages, you are training your butt off. It's like the Olympics, you are coming to class a lot, you're studying hard, you're going through hopefully at your school rigorous tests and you're getting your failing tests you're getting feedback about what you need to fix and your technique isn't as crisp enough or you don't know your book enough you don't know your technique names you don't know your japanese whatever it is uh your your roles are terrible you need to be more flexible it could be a thousand different things so when you work through that stage you are working really hard and you're probably at your most fit and best at that point usually then you finally earn your black belt. You have taken it from your teachers. They didn't give it to you, you earned it, you took it from them. You carved out your spot in your lineage and your heritage, wherever that school and tradition might be. And then that night, that special night where you get your black belt, everyone's cheering for you, all your friends, your family, they're so proud of your accomplishment. You're proud of yourself. You feel this was a really hard trip and I did it. I didn't quit. I didn't fail my friends. I didn't fail my teachers and I didn't fail myself. I actually said what I was going to do and followed through and did it. It's an amazing accomplishment. One that only one and maybe one in a hundred will do. For every hundred students, only one will get to black belt. The rest will quit. You get your black belt. You sleep with your black belt. You're so excited. You show everyone your certificate. And, and when you get your black belt, there is a positive social, not a stigma, but people take note of that. People respect you more. When you tell someone you're a purple belt or an orange belt, they don't care. They don't know how to, how to put that into context. They have no idea what that means. So therefore, they don't care. They couldn't care less. Sadly, when you say I've, I've gone from my yellow to my purple belt, they don't care. Now they may fake it and be like, oh, that's great. Happy for you that you went to your, uh, your camo belt. Uh, no, I said purple belt. Oh yeah, your purple belt, good luck. They don't care, but when you say you got your black belt because of the movies and the culture, people know that that means something. But here's a secret. In martial arts, those of us who do it as a living, those of us, of us who have been training for 30 or more years, black belt doesn't mean much at all. Isn't that sad? It means shodan. That's the, trans the translation of show is first. And dan is step. That's your first step on the path. After four or five years of hard, hard work, you have taken your first step in the martial arts. Who knows why culture says it's like you're a master at black belt. There's no such thing. But I don't disrespect the shodan. It's a fantastic achievement, but it's just a small one up that mountain it is literally your first step now I say this because we have a tendency to set our goals so god darn low that we end up quitting right after black belt and that's what black belt itis is it is this arrogance that you because you're a black belt that you are you are it you are it you have your black belt and you come into the dojo the next day walking strutting I should say proudly and you should be proud then what happens? What happens after a month? What happens after two months after you've become a black belt? Nothing. You go back to training. You go back to square one. You go back to being anonymous amongst other black belts. You can remember as a teenager when you had the coolest car and you couldn't wait to show your friends that car 
and they, they loved it for a day and all the girls looked at you, look at his new car. And after a week, what happens? You're just stuck with car payments. No one could care less about what car you drive. It's the same with a black belt. And black belt-itis is knowing this. And many black belts and many martial arts get very conceited after black belt. They really think that they're the best. And God forbid they go to a beginner's class or a class that might be a brown belt level class. No, I can't do that. I'm a black belt. I can't go to a white belt class. I'm too good for that, too cool for school. <laughs> and th those of us that have been around for 30 years are like, oh God, he's got black belt-itis. Look at the arrogance coming through the door. Didn't I teach him anything? Didn't he learn anything? And we laugh because we've been there too. <laughs> So after black belt, you're gonna have a high that goes way quickly to a low. And all you're left with is the mat and the training time and your teachers and you are the lowest in the black belt class. Once again, you're at the bottom of the rung. And then all you can rely on is your passion and your hunger for the martial arts. And it's gonna test your fortitude, it's gonna test your endurance, it's gonna test your integrity big time. That's why most people quit right after black belt because they think that's the end of the journey. My gosh, can you see what's behind me? This is our particular belt system in our school. Do you see those black belts? You see the first stripe right there? That's showdown, that's first step. All of these above here are five, six years to get to. And then you get here, why would you quit there? Why would you quit there? It's like getting your license and never driving your car out of your garage. Can you see all these? Oh, oh, look at that, second degree. Oh, that's two, three years away. Third degree, four or five years, maybe more. Fourth degree, now you're really getting up there. Fifth degree, you're really starting to understand the martial art. Look at all these. Those are for the people that can endure decades in the martial arts, year after year. They've seen thousands of people go. They don't even remember the first and second degrees. They're so old. To get to this level, you can't quit here. That's black belt-itis. And it's something I'm describing, but what's the prescription to it? How do we fix this, Mr. Norcross? Because I don't even train, so this video is boring to me. How do I fix it after black belt? How do I keep my passion? There's no secret to it. There's no magic to it. I can't, I can't email you the secret. There is none. You have to keep going. And that's why people always say gambate or ganbate. Keep going. Don't stop. Keep going up the mountain. Keep walking. And again, no one is immune to this disease. So after you get your black belt, you get a bit conceited and then hopefully it's knocked out of you or your teacher knocks it out of you or whatever it might be, or you just quit. You stop, you get very lazy, you literally rest on your laurels, you stop coming to class. Before black belt, you were coming to five, six classes a week. After black belt, most students, they just start, you just, how do I tell? Look at your card. How many classes a week are you coming to? What's, what's your attendance card say? Are you still coming to four or five a week after black belt? Most people don't. They go to one or two. They only come to black belt class. They don't come to weapons or classical budo or BBC, which means black belt club. It's a club for you as a black belt. But it's very common. It happens all the time. I talk to my good friends from Taekwondo and Aikido and Jiu Jitsu and, and Kendo and they all say the same thing. Oh, my student was so passionate until she got her black belt and then she kind of just did this and, and dropped off and quit. And in America especially, we have to understand that black belt means first step. And as my teachers used to say, after your black belt, guess what? You suck a little less. <laughs> you suck a little bit less. You're no master at first degree. And I don't care if you have three first degree black belts, that doesn't make you a third degree. A third degree is way higher level than a, three per, a person with three first degrees. If you have four first degrees, it shows me that you can't stick to anything. You bounce, you're a dabbler. Sure, you might bounce to one to the other, but did you stick with it and get the real deep knowledge? Maybe your teacher didn't want to show you anymore because they, they were waiting for you to earn a second degree to show you all the high secret stuff. I don't know. But a third degree black belt has way more respect in my book than any first. Of course they do. 
Black belt is a hard belt to get. Very difficult, but it ain't the hardest. This ain't hard compared to these. This is a high school diploma. This is your GED, and this is college. This is your doctorate here, post-doctorate. This is for the freaks like me that are too dumb to quit, too stupid to leave, and stick around for 30, 40, 50 years. I'm almost 50 years old. I've been doing this since I was nine, eight years old, and I haven't left yet. Have I had black belt-itis? Mm, no. Yes, to a point, but I never quit, never left. Af actually, after my black belt, I continued to accelerate. I continued to go up. I didn't go down at all, but I was a freak. I was a weirdo. I was obsessed with this. Uh, I would actually go back and go to do my brown belt tests over again after my black belt. I would go back and do the test to stay sharp, and I accelerated towards second degree. I got all the key hone. I tried to master every weapon. I was at every single seminar. I was still coming five to six classes per week to my second, third, fourth, etc. So I am an anomaly. I'm not a normal person by any means. I had a different sickness, a, a weird, freakish obsession with martial arts, and that affected my personal life. That's another video for another time. But I'm talking about the average black belt person that comes in. He or she should be doing at least three to four classes per week, representing their school, trying hard to earn their second degree, coming to class, asking questions, uh, getting a new curriculum with brand new techniques from first to second degree and continuing to master the basics and continue the basics because as we know everything is basics so do you have black belt itis if you're not a black belt you don't have to worry about this you are immune to that sickness are you a brown belt with black belt itis you're already starting to get bored with your training are you already starting to doubt yourself during your testing process are you already starting to not believe in yourself and don't even think you can make it to first degree? Talk to someone, they'll help you. But you could be a green belt or a blue belt or a red belt and still get this arrogance. Oh, I just got my purple belt with two stripes. Look at me. Uh, get rid of that quick. Get rid of that quick. Or your seniors will beat it out of you. But black belt-itis, there's no magic, no secret. The description is what I just said. The prescription is keep going, keep training. The martial arts will either accept you or not. It will be there for you regardless. But it is a giant funnel and a thousand people fall in and only one or two will ever master the martial arts. Look at how many dojos are around. There probably aren't many, are there? But how many people take martial arts? Thousands. Well, why is it only that one or two out of a thousand make it? I don't know. I don't know the secret formula. But you don't quit. That's a certain death. That is a certain destruction of your martial art career. And it will wreak havoc on your mind with regret. So if you have quit and left, you can go back. The doors are always open. If you feel you're getting black belt-itis, fight through it and come to class more. It will heal itself. Talk to your teachers, as always, with everything in life. Communication is the secret. And just have fun. Remember why you started martial arts. What was it that made you start? What was the passion from your childhood? What movie, what book was it? What was it that brought you in? I can still remember myself at eight years old. And that passion never leaves. And I can be at the dojo 12 hours a day, five days a week, and it never goes away. Sure, you have bad days, we all do. But, uh, no, I'm going to be my best doctor. I'm going to be my best nurse. I'm going to fight off black belt-itis. I'm not going to get it. And if I do, I'm going to beat it. I'm going to knock it into the ground. Kick it to the curb. Okay, my friends, I hope this has helped you. If, if you're not in the martial arts, you're probably bored out of your mind right now. But those of us who train, who are actively training need these types of videos to keep us going because sometimes your teacher either ignores you or you just don't seem to feel like you matter in the school even though of course you do and of course we lay in bed with such self-doubt such self-criticism believing that we can't do anything 
noteworthy. We can't be remembered long after our death. We can't write that book. We can't write that poem. That's black belt-itis in a different form for another day. But stay positive, keep training, have fun, remember why you started. When you have bad days, get in your car and get to your dojo and continue to train and you'll feel better after class. We'll see you next time, my friends. Good luck.